So tomorrow I'm gonna go on a one night backpacking trip. I'm gonna head up to the top of Rincon Peak, which is what you're looking at. It's 8,600 feet. We're at about 3,000 here at the house, so it'll be about 5,600 feet elevation gain. Uh, it takes about an hour, a little over an hour to get to the trailhead. It's on the back side of the mountain, so I'll come at it from the, the far side. Um, gonna spend the night about a mile and a half from the peak. Gonna try and hit the trailhead right as the sun comes up, get out of the house while it's still dark. Got the bag packed and uh, excited to do it. So, see you guys tomorrow. All right, so it's 5.30 in the morning and we are heading out on our trip. Got everything packed up in the truck. Looks like the sun's about to come up. Should take an hour for me to get over to the trailhead. Got my bag packed, ready to go. Making our approach from the south. Found the locals, not a chatty bunch. All right, so I just uh, made it here to the Miller Creek Trailhead to head up to Rincon Peak. Uh, it's a little bit after seven o'clock. It's about 65 degrees. Uh, the drive took a little longer just because the dirt road was about 16 miles of dirt road driving and then the last four were pretty slow going. Um, got some cows milling about, local people hanging out back there. Um, so there's about five cars here at the trailhead. I don't know if everyone's backpacking or, or what they're up to, but we'll see who we meet up on the trail. So I'm going to grab my pack, which is uh, over there by my truck, and uh, hit the trail. All right, here we are at the fence for Saguaro National Park. Ooh. And there's our sign. So we're at, what, yeah, a little under a mile and a half. So three to go. We're gonna go sign in at the box up there and uh, start hitting the top of this mountain. So, just made it up out of the canyon. Looks like I'm out of the tree line too. Heading up there, I see a whole lot more trees. That first quarter mile of Saguaro National Park was like rock climbing, that was not easy. Uh, there was a water source at the one mile mark down in the canyon, um, but that was too early on the trip for it to be of any use. So I brought six liters of water with me, which is, Two pounds a liter, 12 pounds. It's a pretty significant weight, but at this time of year, I just don't think there's gonna be any reliable water sources on this hike. So since I'm gonna be up here for two days, I just brought everything I'd need. So gonna continue to climb uh, up. We can finally see some peaks out past us. Super pretty, heat's turned on. It was 65 when we started, it's definitely closer to 80 now. So, just keep gaining elevation and dropping that temperature ourselves. So, we'll see you in a bit.
Let's see what's for lunch. Sausage sticks. Classic. Yeah. Lara bar. Pecan pie. Pecan pie Lara bar. I don't really like pecan pie. It's kind of gooey, but this is probably going to be pretty good. I'm sure right now. Anything will be good. And vanilla bean. Energy gel. All right, so camp is made, lunch was had, and now it's 3.6 miles, I think, to the uh, summit of Recon Peak. So the bag is about, oh, I don't know, 25 pounds lighter. So that's awesome. Just got enough water to get up there, first aid kit, some sunscreen, my uh, GPS device, in case I get into trouble, and my hiking poles. So gonna take off from Happy Valley and swing up to the peak. See you at the top. We're about to hit the summit. It took two hours and 15 minutes and exactly four miles from Happy Valley Camp to get here. That was the hardest thing. It was like taking stairs covered in sand to get to the top of the Empire State Building. That was absolutely brutal. Uh, but we're here at the top of Rincon Peak, 8,600 feet outside Tucson. Look at that. I look at this mountain every day driving home from work. Holy crappers. We are very high up. Whew, my legs are jello. Just like the last thing you want when you're on the top of a mountain. But was it worth it? Oh yeah. Oh. That's it. We are on the top of the mountain. Whew. Oh man. Whew. Woo. Ah. Oh. We did it. So dinosaur Neil has made it to the top and I brought my little dinosaur friend with me. Victory, he is now the tallest thing in the area when dinosaurs roamed the earth. Okay, so that is Micah Mountain. That's where I'm gonna be backpacking on Thursday night. Spend the night up there. Behind that, and the little shadowy one, that's Mount Lemon. And then this ridge line right here, that's Tonka Verde Ridge. And then down there in the haze is Tucson and my house somewhere. So this is a 
I'm looking at you, India. But I took a little break. Got the heart rate down. Time to head back over to those bushes. And uh, head back down to camp. I don't have much water left. It's four miles back. It only took two hours to get up here, so I'm hoping for an hour 20, maybe something like that back a little quicker. And then I'll be able to fill up my water when I get back. Well, after hiking 14 miles, making it to the summit, and I'm about half a mile till I get to camp, I finally found a water source that I missed on the way up the mountain. Uh, it's like a little hole in a rock. It's like maybe 200 gallons of water in it. So I grabbed my filter and I filled up my liter bottle and then grabbed another two liters to take back to camp to cook with. So here it is. Glorious, glorious water. That's it. That's the water. Lifesaver. Couldn't be happier. So which one is dinner? This is dinner. So, dinner tonight. We got more pasta side, chicken flavor, fettuccine, and a savory chicken flavored sauce. Let's see, two cups of water and a tablespoon of margarine optional. Yeah, we don't need margarine, right? Let's get the two cups of water going. And we're waiting. Okay. Two cups of water. Also, pink salmon with extra virgin olive oil. It's the way we like it. Yeah, that should take about two minutes to boil, I think. Some people say you can just put it right in here, because it's foil line. I think the bag would get too cold. So tonight, since I don't need to conserve gas, it's my only night. We're just going to cook this sucker. I am going to get down on this tuna, because I am starving. We got 200 calories. That's why you get the one with the olive oil. I think they're normally only 100. You get the olive oil, it has like 90 calories or something. Glorious. It's glorious. Some of my flavor powder stuck in there. Get in there. That's the good stuff. All right. I think this is ready, and even if it's not, I'm gonna eat it because I'm starving. Let's see what we got. Pasta. Good stuff. Looks like chicken noodle soup, kind of. I think I would have liked it better after a hard day if it was kind of creamy. I do have an Alfredo one at the house, so maybe on Thursday when we go up to Manning Camp on Mica Mountain, I'll bring that one. This is very good. Good morning. It's about 6 a.m. I'm gonna make some tea, which sounds wonderful. 
let the rain fly off my tent last night. Uh, it was pretty warm when I was uh, going to bed. It got pretty chilly though. Um, sleeping bag did good. I had to put my hoodie on, some PJ pants. Let's see what's for breakfast. Slept okay. Woke up a few times, but. Got a blueberry almond kind bar. And the Bobo's Toaster Strawberry Jam. It's like half Nutri-Rain bar, half Pop-Tart, half Metamucil. <laughs> pretty dry so yesterday based on the trail signs and on my map it said that from here to the summit was 3.6 miles so I brought two liters of water with me well, it was like a liter and three quarters uh, but that was like one of the hardest hikes I ever did and uh, a liter and three quarters wasn't enough also it wasn't 3.6 miles it was like more like a little bit over four. So round trip was a little bit over eight. And to bring a liter and a half or eight miles was not enough. So I was rationing my water pretty heavily on the hike back down. And uh, it was rough. I was definitely getting dehydrated. My lips were getting really dry, starting to get a little bit of a headache. But when I got back, I went and found that, I mean, I had plenty of water in the tent, but on the way back I found that pool of water. I was able to filter it out, get myself two liters. I drank a liter right there at the pool and then grabbed another one and brought it back to camp. So, yeah, so a night of sleeping, rest, water. Feeling hydrated, feeling good for it this morning. My right ankle is pretty sore, feels a little loose. Hmm, you lost my tea. Guess I'm not the only one who likes the watering hole. Got the water right there. Hummingbirds hitting up the little red flowers. Other birds eating the bugs, getting a drink. This is, uh, it's like the pilot gas station in the morning. It's where everybody comes to get ready for their day. All right, so 7.30, 7.45 now, started out at 7.30. Uh, got up at six, did breakfast tea, uh, packed up, uh, went over to the water source, which is only a couple hundred yards past camp in the wrong direction. Filtered out a liter uh, to go in my pack with the liter I already have. And then I uh, grabbed two more unfiltered that I can filter later if needed. So, heading back to the truck. It's been a good uh, good two days out here in the Rincon Peaks of the Waro National Park. Um, only got five and a half miles until I get down the mountain. Sit down, have a beer, eat some pizza, watch some football. But uh, definitely a challenging, humbling hike. This was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. People do it in a day hike. They just shoot up and shoot down. And uh, yeah, no thanks. That's not for me. Uh, super glad I brought my backpack and equipment and spent the night. So I'm going to turn on some music, knock out a couple miles.
So just ran into my first rattlesnake. He's just hanging out right where I need to go. So hopefully he decides to get a move on. And well, we seem to have come to an impasse. Oh, he's, he's starting to do something, so hopefully this won't take all day. <sighs> Spooky. Keep going. Is that your, is that your home right there, that little hole? Why don't you go there? Go in the bushes. Last half mile here, and I'll make it back to the truck. It's uh, 21 miles-ish for the last 24 hours. Um, really good hike, really enjoyed it. Glad I got it done. I've been wanting to do that for about six months. Been looking at that mountain every day, driving around Tucson, like, man, I want to go stand on the top of that. So, glad to say I finally did it. Had a really good night up there. Um, I packed out almost six liters of water with me. Uh, that's what I had seen recommended online. Yeah, that wasn't enough for an overnight. So, you know, to be able to do dinner and, you know, breakfast, have a cup of tea in the morning, that kind of stuff. So, it would have been enough... If I had just out and backed it, which would have sucked, that would have been really hard. Um, but I would suggest if you're doing it overnight and there's no water source up there that you're guaranteed on, I would bring eight. And just know, you know, yeah, that sucks bringing eight. That's what, 16 pounds of water? But I'd rather carry 16 pounds up a mountain uh, and not need it than only bring five and have to do the last five miles out with nothing to drink. So, uh, glad I found a water source up there that saved my butt. I was able to filter out three liters um, and uh, bring another two unfiltered with me just in case something happened on the way down. So, overall, really good hike. Good uh, first backpacking trip here in Tucson. Got another one on Thursday. Looking forward to that, Micah Mountain. So, until then, I'll see you.